Hello friends, welcome back to Monster Monday. We're doing the Dragon series, and up today, the Black Dragon. He is a nasty. If one were to look at the art from Dungeons and Dragons, there are so many options out there. Um, from official source books, published material, um, compendiums, and even major anthologies. There's so many different variations on how dragons are depicted. But one of the things that I think 5th edition does very thoroughly are physical descriptions of each of the dragon types. And I'm not going to read them in full because there are other videos that are like 35 minutes long that do that. Or you could literally just read them for yourself in the book. But I think when you look at the art, it's also important as a DM to read those descriptions. When you use a dragon of any type in an encounter, it's important to know the basics of what they look like, how they move, so that you can describe those things vividly to your players at the table. Dragons are not something that are encountered frequently in most people's games. So when you encounter them, you want it to be descriptive. Um, let's talk about the black dragons. Um, alphabetically speaking, they're up first in the series, and um, there may be a good one to cover because they kind of represent what a lot of people think of when they think of the big, nasty, mean, evil dragons. Of course, red dragons are very popular in the game, but black dragons are nasty, nasty creatures. Um, one of the things that I find interesting about the black dragons is how they look. Um, and, and I think that the presentation of how they look has evolved since first and earlier editions. So in keeping with the general structure of fifth edition, there are four age categories that are presented in the monster manual for each dragon type. Um, I'm gonna summarize to you from weakest to most powerful, how these sound and some of the differences as each dragon gets older and more powerful. So let's start off with the little baby, the black dragon wormling. Um, these little guys are chaotic evil. They have an AC of 17 and hit points on average of 33. They're considered a challenge rating two. They're amphibious. They have a bite attack that does um, 1d10 plus two with some additional acid damage. They can also breathe. They have acid breath. Um, it has a five to six recharge. So the dragon exhales acid in a 15 foot line that's five feet wide. Each creature in that line must make a DC 11 save or take 5d8 acid damage, half as much on a successful save. That is only challenge rating two and that's pretty darned powerful. Um, so even a little baby wormling dragon can be tough. Let's look at the next category up, the young black dragon has a slightly higher armor class, has an 18 AC, has quite a bit more hit points. Um, and part of this is the challenge rating between a worm, uh, wormling and a young black dragon jumps up significantly. It goes from two as a wormling to a challenge rating of seven as a young black dragon. So a lot of development must happen within a dragon um, in that age period. Um, so they have a lot more hit points, average hit points of 127. Um, Multi-attacks, so they got three attacks, bite and claws. The bites and claws also do significantly more damage, as is appropriate for a larger dragon. Their acid breath, also a recharge of five to six, um, is a longer line. So this is a 30-foot line that extends five feet wide instead of 15 like the worms. Each creature in that line must make a DC 14 deck save or take 11 D8 acid damage. So the Wormling had a DC 11 deck save and 5 D8. This one knocks out a DC 14 with 11 D8. So a lot more potential for pain and suffering. Let's take a look at the adult black dragon. The adult black dragon bumps up yet one more point in armor class. So it has an AC of 19 significant hit points, 195 on average. Um, it has legendary resistance three times a day. If the dragon fails a saving throw, it can just choose to succeed instead. Mm. Considered a challenge rating 14. It has multi-attacks. 
and its frightful presence. So it has bites, claws, and a tail attack. Frightful presence, each creature of the dragon's choice that is within 120 feet of the dragon and aware of it must succeed on a DC 16 wisdom save or become frightened for one minute. A creature can repeat the save at the end of each turn. It also has acid breath. The dragon exhales in a 60 foot line that is five feet wide. Each creature in that line must make a DC 18 dexterity save throw or take 12 D8 acid damage. Now what I find interesting is that the adult black dragon's total damage output isn't that much more than the young black dragon. So the young black dragon's acid breath does 11 D8, the adult does 12 D8, but the DC on the saving throw jumps up significantly. A deck save of a DC 18. Now, this is the cool part, right? At the adult point, we start to have legendary actions. The dragon can take three legendary actions, choosing from the option below. Um, detect, so the dragon makes a wisdom perception check. Tail attack, the dragon makes a tail attack. Wing attack, this costs two of its actions. The dragon beats its wings. Each creature within 10 feet of the dragon must succeed on a DC 19 deck save or take 2d6 plus 6 bludgeoning damage and be knocked prone. The dragon can then fly up to half its flying speed. Pretty deadly. But now let's, let's look at the big bad Mama Jama, the ancient black dragon. This thing is just fearful. Legendary resistance three times a day, like the adult. Multi-attack with frightful presence, just doing more and more damage. Acid breath that does a 90-foot line that's 10 feet wide. More people and longer range. It's a lot of acid being blown out. Um, the saving throw is massive. It's a DC 22 deck save. And 15 D8 damage. Also has legendary actions, the same as the adult, the detect, the tail attack, and the wing attack. Um, so the black dragon is a fearsome foe. Uh, just the, the epitome of the chaotic, evil, um, dragonish image that one might have. Um, I'm going to le leave the entire reading of the description of the dragon, but I think that, as I said before, as a DM, you should read it. Like, read it and then reread it so that you have a very concise idea of what these dragons look like, what their motivations are, how they work, okay? Um, but I do want to talk about their layer actions. So um, the black dragons have some pretty amazing layer actions. Um, the dragon takes a layer action to cause one of the following effects, and it can't use the same effect two rounds in a row. Pools of water that the dragon can see within 120 feet of it surge outward in a grasping tide. Any creature on the ground within 20 feet of such a pool must succeed on a DC 15 strength save or be pulled up to 20 feet into the water and knocked prone. A cloud of swarming insects fills a 20-foot radius sphere centered on one point the dragon chooses within 120 feet of it. The cloud spreads around corners and remains until the dragon dismisses it as an action. Any creature in the cloud, when it appears, must make a DC 15 con save or take 3d6 piercing damage on a failed save or half as much on a successful. A creature that ends its turn takes 3d6 more. Uh, magical darkness. Okay, so those are all layer actions that I can do. Um, regional effects. So the area around uh, this black dragon's lair um, has certain powers. The land within six miles of the lair takes twice as long as normal to traverse since the plants grow thick and twisted and the swamps are thick with reeking mud. Or water sources within one mile of the lair are supernaturally fouled. Enemies of the dragon that drink such water regurgitate it within minutes. Or fog lightly obscures the land within six miles of the lair. So the black dragon is a vicious and cruel creature. Um, now, let's get down to the nitty gritty. How, where, and when do we use the black dragons? So I think obviously the four age categories for dragons are kind of linked to some of the 
adventuring party levels, right? So if you wanted to have a, a black dragon encounter a low level party, it would certainly make sense for you to have a black dragon wormling um, encounter them. Um, I think at mid-level, a mid-level party could certainly confront a young black dragon. Um, a higher level, like levels you know, 10 to 15, um, could deal with an adult black dragon. And then that highest tier would probably be the ones dealing with an ancient black dragon. But more so than just matching it with levels and throwing it in, I like in Monster Monday to think of the where and when and how you use these things. So these creatures enjoy kind of like rotty places that are outside of civilization, like swamps and bogs. Um, I could even see them being in, in kind of a Mediterranean island environment where you know there's, there's just a rainforest kind of jungle vibe with caves going on. Uh, but they do like wet environments, right? So I think one cool thing is, you know, if your party's on an ex exhibition to, like, let's say they're going on an adventure to a place where you've already laid out what they wanted to do, um, or they've chosen to go in search of a certain treasure and they're on their way there and they have to traverse a swampy bog-like area. That's a great way to introduce the black dragon to a party. And it can be a wormling. In fact, it could be two or three wormlings. Depending on the size and experience level of your party, that's a great way to kind of introduce these black dragons. Um, or that, like I said, that jungle island or jungle peninsula, you know, uh, rainforest environment is also another way to introduce them. But I like to tie it into narrative. And I think one of the cool things that you could do is have that low level party encounter these black dragon wormlings. These black dragon wormlings maybe have never encountered, because it's a remote era, area, they've never encountered humanoids. When they've gone hunting, they're hunting for animals, for meat to eat, but they've never encountered humanoids. And so, you know, their inclination is that this is just another food source, and they boldly, like a child, take on this, this creature that they think is, you know, easily defeatable. And maybe the party defeats and kills these dragons, or maybe the party defeats one of them and kills it and the other one flies away. No matter, either way, wherever there are wormlings, there are adults. So mama adult is somewhere. Maybe she went off hunting for food and left the wormlings in the swamp. When she gets back and finds out that they're both dead or that one of them was dead and the other escaped, now the party is on mama's radar. And mama's not necessarily gonna rush off to go kill those people yet, but dragons have long memories. Maybe mama would track them and watch them. And maybe you use that you know, adult black dragon as a, a measure to kind of foreshadow something to come for your party. Maybe the party, after they leave the swamp, after having successfully defeated the dragon, uh, wormlings, you know, they're, they're in another part of the land, they're on their way to the ruined tower of blah 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 or the dungeon of blah blah blah, wherever it is that they were going originally before they stumbled across the black wormling dragons. Um, maybe they see this shadow up in the sky very far off following this black silhouetted shadow up in the sky. And that's, that's just mama dragon getting an idea of who they are. And then maybe they make a camp and mama dragon swoops down and like gets their scent, right? But doesn't attack, just gets their scent or maybe makes things a little bit difficult for them. Like maybe they have horses and wagons and mama dragon torches all that, but lets them live and eat, takes the horse meat and then flies away. So this could be an ongoing, like recurring theme, right? And as your party gains levels, as they adventure and they gain levels, Maybe uh, Mama Dragon's firstborn is a young black dragon. Young black dragon comes after the party. And maybe the party defeats young black dragon, or maybe young black dragon gets the party uh, you know, to scatter and injures and wounds them and takes whatever of value it can take. Maybe the black dragon offers to spare them their lives if they 
they pledge, you know, all of their treasure to it. And, you know, why not? Um, but I, I think that ultimately the idea is, is that you could have a family of dragons. Imagine a family of dragons who, you know, now sees this adventuring party as, you know, pawns or maybe actually as a threat as they get higher in level. And maybe this black dragon family knows secrets that somehow will link back into your campaign that are important, right? Maybe at much higher, you know, mid to high level adventures, there's some artifact that the party needs and they don't know where to find it, but they discover through their research and through their investigations that this black dragon queen knows where to find this ancient thing that the wizard had used hundreds of years ago, blah, 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 right? So the idea is that you, you can turn a dragon into an NPC, a much more powerful foe that would clearly and easily wipe out the party, right? But that dragon could be an NPC. Is a black dragon likely to be the ally of a good party? No. So let's flip the script just for giggles. What if you had a party of murder hobo bad guys, okay? And they were actually kind of into this dragon and wanted to ally themselves with the dragon, okay? Make this shift and, and become, you know, servants of this dragon. Black dragons are not necessarily the, the kindest, most cooperative dragons. Um, and we'll see other dragons where that might be a better option to do that. Uh, but in terms of their cruelty and their brutality, you know, maybe you have a party that wants to kind of befriend this dragon and, and gain their, their benefits. Um, do that to an extent where you're careful about it, but remember that above all, the black dragons are kind of extremely cruel and brutal, so that if a party is subservient to that black dragon, they might be spared, and maybe even the black dragon would share some of its um, power with them. Um, but the black dragon also isn't a complete dummy, and it doesn't necessarily want to be manipulated and used as a tool. So there are a lot of different variations for how to play with this creature, but they are fierce, they are brutal and cruel. Um, and as the first of the chromatic dragons that I'm exploring in this series, I think of them as a default villain most of the time. Could you make a variation in your own campaign where there's actually a, a black dragon who doesn't want to be cruel and brutal and is kind of outcast from its, its kind? Sure. I mean, just personally, I think that would be lame. But you could do whatever you want. It's your game. So hopefully you guys have gained some insights into how to use dragons. And specifically for this episode, the black dragon. Um, I do like the idea of black dragons being hoarders, you know, in the sense, not, I mean, all dragons like their hordes, but I like the idea that you build a backstory for a black dragon, for the, the adults or the ancient ones, because above all, they, they live off of the spoils of things that died, right? So whether it's a swamp, which, okay, fine, or I like my idea with the rainforest kind of vibe, um, the jungle, because maybe there is a civilization that, you know, existed there who dared to try to oppose this ancient black dragon and the black dragon destroyed it, right? So imagine describing to your party that as they're hacking their way through a jungle, through the rainforest, through a bamboo forest or whatever, they come upon an opening where they see the ruins of an ancient civilization. You know, imagine some... Like, I, I'm inspired by things like the Mayan ruins that are buried in the jungle. You know, so you see these stone ziggurats rising with, you know, the, the jungle forest creeping over and vines and moss because it's damp all the time, creeping over the stones. But you also have these blocks and walls that have been crumbled, but not by physical force, by acid, like eroded and burned away, chipped pockmarked, scorched areas of the streets because this dragon, this black dragon, destroyed this town, right? And then just decided to make the big ziggurat its home. And maybe half of the, 
the lower plane of this flooded jungle city, you know, is swamp. It's basically putrid, you know, stagnant water. And that's, the black dragon loves that, right? But then there are these outcroppings of this partially drowned jungle, rainforest, ancient civilization city. And somewhere in that, hidden amongst the buildings, are the treasures that this black dragon has hoarded over time. So that in and of itself could be a whole adventure, right? Which definitely mid to higher level, if you're gonna go try to take on a dragon in its lair. But I think descriptively, you know, it's kind of cooler to me to imagine a dragon situated amidst the ruins of a, you know, a drowned jungle overgrown mossy city um, you know, and I'm inspired by things like Indiana Jones and, and those kind of um, movie influences, but there are plenty of stories where, you know, you could, you could look at uh, some of the published materials, right, for Chult or um, the Tomb of Annihilation, that stuff. Like, you, you could see how a black dragon could be in an environment like this, and it would be fun for a party to go on an expedition to even find these ruins and then once they make it through the jungle and encounters along the way to and maybe even encounters with wormling dragons and young black dragons then they finally get to this where this family of black dragons lives right and it's an, an adult black dragon is who they think is running this show when in reality the big mama ancient black dragon is slumbering you know mostly submerged under the water at the base of this underground complex that is topped by this ziggurat rising from the fetid, putrid, swampy water. So carry that out how you will, but I think black dragons are great villainous dragons to start off with, and you can use them at any level in any campaign setting pretty much. Um, and even if you don't want to go with the rainforest swampy kind of vibe, they could just be great dragons to have like in a ruined area. You know, the ruins of an old town along a river near some caves, that kind of stuff works too. So use them cautiously because they are cruel and brutal, but be true to the black dragon and I think you won't be disappointed. So until next we meet, thank you for watching. And of course, if you have great ideas or fun stories to share of your own encounters with or uses of the black dragon, share them in the comments below, and we'll see you on the next episode.